Generative AI has been quite a buzzword in the tech industry from past couple of years now. With the rapid innovation and ever-changing capabilities of this technology, it's a little bit hard to keep up. But the more you learn about this technology, more you will be equipped to thrive in this era of AI. Hi everyone, I'm Swati. I work as a cloud consultant with Google. I make tech and travel videos on this channel. In this video, I'll share three essential Gen AI terms you absolutely need to know in 2025. Stay till the end because I'll share a bonus term as well, which maybe you'll use and hear a lot this year. So let's dive right in. For decades, machines have been built to act on human commands or instructions. They would execute whatever code we would provide them and provide the accurate output. But gradually, now machines are uh, gaining the ability to learn, think and act like humans. They can perform creative and intellectual tasks which earlier seemed to be impossible. And that's with the help of Generative AI. So Generative AI is a type of artificial intelligence that generates brand new content based on the patterns it sees in the existing data. So it does not act on some pre-written code but it learns patterns from its training data and then generates output just like humans do it learns from the data and then generates output so that is what generative ai is and that is uh, the main foundation behind a lot of tools which you are using like chat gpt gemini and many other such ai tools another essential thing about generative ai is that you can generate high quality content without requiring any specialized ai knowledge now the foundation of generative AI is LLM and that's what our first term is. LLM stands for large language models. Now large language models are advanced AI models which are trained on huge amount of data and designed to understand and generate human-like text in large scale. Now how it works, think of it like a, a model which has been trained on uh, to read and write with a huge data set, consider a library size of internet. So it feeds on a lot of data sources like books, websites, um, and different sources of data. It learns different patterns from uh, that data and then gives you good quality results. So that is how large language model learn uh, from huge amount of data and um, are able to generate human-like text and understand human uh, human-like queries directly and give you good quality results. So if we have to break down how LLMs work, on high level there are three steps uh, that is uh, training, understanding and generating. So first of all, uh, like models uh, train on huge amount of data set from which it tries to understand different patterns uh, in the data, for example, sentence structure or uh, what are the patterns uh, in grammar patterns um, and then tries to understand what are the context, right? So next when the model is trained, uh, whenever user uh, provides a query, it tries to understand user's intent or context behind that query uh, based on whatever it has learned from uh, the data. So once uh, the context has been understood, then accordingly based on its training and understanding, it generates an accurate response. Now let's imagine an LLM is trying to complete the sentence. The rain was falling. Now it has to complete the sentence. It doesn't memorize the sentences, but instead recognizes the patterns like Adjectives usually come before the nouns. For example, it could be a soft rain or heavy rain. And verbs often follow the subject. For example, falling heavily or gently. So some of these words can complete this sentence. So using this, it predicts and generates a continuation like, let's see. The rain was falling gently so here we got the idea right llm has not memorized the sentence but it has tried to get some idea and understand the pattern from the data it was trained on and using that it generated the sentence 
Now, contrary to uh, other machine learning models, which are usually uh, designed for one particular task, for example, uh, movie recommendation machine learning model uh, or weather forecasting model, which are usually designed for one particular uh, task, LLMs or large language models are very versatile. They, they help you in a lot of tasks like uh, summarizing your text, uh, creating new content, whether uh, a new report for you or a new script for you or drafting an email for you and even generating a new code for you. So they can help you in uh, or generating new uh, now uh, even generating new images or videos for you. So large language models are very versatile. And a single model can do a lot of tasks for the user, unlike other machine learning models, which were usually designed for one particular or one specific task. Now that we know what LLMs can do and how they perform different tasks, let's come to a second term. And you must have heard a lot about this term recently. That is prompt engineering. Now the way uh, we are providing instruction to these LLMs, like whenever we type uh, anything on ChatGPT or Gemini, the instruction that we are providing to these models is called as prompt. And these LLMs are very powerful. And the way we are providing this instruction or the way we are providing these prompts in return accordingly will be getting uh, the response from the LLM. So the better quality prompt we are, uh, will be providing, the better quality result will get in, uh, in return. For example, uh, I write on chat GPT, write a story. In this particular prompt, if you notice, there's not much background or not much context. It's a very generic prompt like write a story. Story could be about anything, what, what topic, for what purpose do you need it, there's nothing provided over here. Of course, model is going to generate the response, but that might not be very good quality and of course, not cater to my requirement. On the other hand, if I provide more context in my prompt, like help me write a story for college competition based on the topic climate change. Here I'm providing more background and more context in this prompt. So model would be able to generate a response, more specific and more accurate response. So this way of communicating with these models, especially LLMs, by tweaking our prompts so that it can generate good quality um, output is called as prompt engineering. And the more you tweak with your prompts, the more you practice, better result you will get. So that, that's what prompt engineering is. Until late 2023, if you would have used these AI chatbots like BARD or ChatGPT, you would have noticed these models or these chatbots used to deal only with text data. That is, they were not able to understand or deal with other formats of data like images or videos or audio. Uh, cut to today, with the multimodal AI capabilities, we can now um, even uh, provide different uh, formats of data to these uh, chatbots, whether text, uh, audio, images, different formats you can provide as input and these uh, different formats can also be generated by these chatbots. Now, this is what a third term is, that is multimodal AI. Multimodal AI can process and integrate different formats of data like text, images, audio, videos, etc. So now at present, whenever you would use these chatbots like Gemini or ChatGPT, you can see we can provide text input and it can generate us uh, a result in different format. Like if I write, help me uh, create a new year greeting card. So I am providing input in the format text, but the model is generating an output in the form of image. And the, uh, the same is possible vice versa as well. Like I provide an image as input and ask a query about this image. So the model is able to provide me response in the text format. So this particular capability is called as multimodal AI. Another very good example of multimodal AI in recent uh, world is uh, self-driving cars. 
In the self-driving cars, there is vision through which, through the cameras, it is able to see roads and other objects nearby. Through the microphones, it is able to hear the sirens and other kinds of noises. Uh, through different sensors, it is uh, able to capture data like the nearest distance from different objects or humans on the, on the road. So isn't this so cool that multimodal AI is giving it multiple senses and making it more smarter and more helpful. Alright, so there's another bonus term for you today and it's very exciting. So until now we were providing prompt to the model and it was generating different formats of responses for us, whether summarizing text or generating new content like that. But generative agents, that's our final term, generative agents take it to next level. They're capable of simulating human-like decision-making and interactions. It's a bit spooky as well, but generative agents are focused on generating adaptive and personalized experiences. Unlike earlier chatbots, which were just used to answer a few queries, these generative agents can think, adapt, and interact more naturally over time, just like humans. Some of the examples are like virtual assistant or customer support agents, which can handle customer queries, troubleshoot issues, and adapt to customers' responses over time. Then there are virtual co-workers like Microsoft Copilot and even Gemini integrated with a lot of Google products can help you take meeting notes, draft emails, uh, suggest edits, and over time it learns your preferences and provide more natural responses. Yeah, um, so generative agents are gradually changing how we interact with technology and making it feel more natural and intuitive. Isn't that exciting? Well, that brings me to the end of the video. I hope you like these terms and um, have you already started using generative AI in your day-to-day -day life? Let me know in the comments. If you have not uh, started using it, I hope this video gives you a good head start. Although this was just a glimpse into the world of generative AI, if you are interested in learning more about generative AI, there's a foundation course uh, on generative AI by Google. I'll leave that in the description and um, you can get more information about generative AI through that course as well. Well, that's it from my side for today. If you liked the video, guys, please hit that like button and please subscribe to my channel. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.